Hey everyone, welcome to How Inez Rolls and thanks for stopping by the channel. Today I am making a special birthday treat that includes bananas. So let's get started. I am making one of my my favorite and actually my most clicked on video. I've made it before. It's uh, the Paula Deen's Nacho Mama's Banana Pudding and I have been making it for over 10 years now. So I thought I would show you a different variation to this uh, recipe, which I've had so many great suggestions on the video. You'll have to check out some of the comments where people have used different items and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But first think about this in three components. You're gonna have your cookie, you're gonna have your banana, and you're gonna have your filling. And so we'll go right that with, we'll go with that first. Let's talk about cookies. So we're gonna start with the base. And so in the recipe, it calls for chessmen butter cookies. I can buy these at any store. The cheapest I have found them though is at Walmart, but I haven't been to Walmart in a while. Let me know if you've gone to Walmart and seen them. So <laughs> I haven't gone there. I haven't ventured that far. But look what I found at the Dollar Tree, you guys. Minis, how cute will that be in this pudding mix? So these are just a couple of dollar, a dollar each, obviously. Um, and so what I've done here is I'm going to be doing something extra special. Now, you could also use Nilla wafers, which a lot of people use. I'm also going to be making some gluten-free. So I bought some gluten-free um, graham crackers. So my husband's just trying to do more things gluten-free and this is actually for his birthday. So I thought we could make some just for him. So now we're going, I'm gonna show you how we're going to do this for his birthday. And that is with individual cups. So normally this recipe is done in a nine by 13. You would put a layer of the cookies on the bottom and then we're going to add some bananas. So that's the second component. Now, because I'm putting them in the cups, I'm just going to be chopping them up and down. But if you're putting it in a nine by 13, you're going to want to cut it on a diagonal because then you'll get nice long strips that are going to be wonderful. Plus it's a little fancy, but I'm just going to be making them in these little cups. So that will be super fun. So let's get started. Let's cut some bananas, shall we? So instead of having the cookie on the bottom, I just used my broken ones and made a crumble because that's gonna be probably a lot better for these little cups, these individual ones. So let's get this going. These already are looking great. So I put about four slices in each one and now I'm just going to put this to the side because now we're going to do the middle component. Now this is where all of that yumminess and creaminess is going to come. We're going to put that right on top. So it's not really banana uh, inside pudding. The banana is just the fruit at the bottom of the pudding. So, so good. So I'm going to get my blender and I'm going to get my component first, which is cream cheese. All right, so the biggest tip I could give you with this recipe is let your cream cheese come to room temperature. Uh, many a times I've had a little chill in it and it got a little chunky the inside, which was still super good. It's just that presentation. So if you get to where you're in a hurry and you still have a little bit of chill, turn on your oven for like at 300 degrees or something like that and then let it go for about five minutes and then turn it off. You can put your wrapper, it's got like a metal container wrapper, like a foil wrapper into the oven and like let it sit in there for like one minute and then check it in one minute intervals. I've done that too and it gets really soft really fast. So that might work for you as well. So we're gonna also add some cream, uh, the sweetened condensed milk, which is just generic. I've had people ask me what kind I use and honestly I use generic for everything almost. Now I this is, um, a name brand cheese or cream cheese but I normally just get the store brand as well and then we'll just give this a quick blend See, it's nice and lumpy free so that's what we want so now we are going to get another bowl to make some pudding so I have gotten French vanilla pudding very easy instant pudding so all we're going to do is 
make the pudding. You're just gonna add two cups of milk and then we're gonna get ready to mix those together. And just like that, follow the directions on the carton, takes two minutes and then we have some pudding. So now here comes the fun part. So we have our components that we're going to mix in together plus we're going to add a um, container of Cool Whip. Now again, store brand, nothing extra special, and it still comes out extra delicious. So you're adding your, um, your Cool Whip. You probably want to do this all in your bigger bowl. And your pudding. And then we're just going to take our spatula and mix it together. I'll bring you closer. And then you're just going to blend it in. It won't take too much effort. You definitely don't need to use a um, your electric uh, mixer. You don't need that. But just a little bit of a, a whisking or a, a using a spatula. It's perfect. Now, every time I've made this, and if you've made them, you probably understand that everybody always asks for them. <laughs> so for a while, I would take these over to our friend's house and they would be like, when are you gonna make those again? Because they were so good. So if you make these, be prepared to get lots of compliments. So that, that creamy mix, that middle, is just gonna be delicious. So if you're going to be making this now in your nine by 13, you would have your cookies on the bottom with your bananas on top, and then you would evenly pour this now over the whole thing. But let me show you what I'm doing for mine. I'm going to be adding mine to a Ziploc bag because then I'll be snipping the edge and then I'll show you how we're gonna be filling up the cups. So I just snipped the corner, kind of wished it wasn't like one of those like slotted ones. And we're just going to carefully fill it up. Look how pretty those turned out. So it'll make about 12 and I got these little containers at the Dollar Tree, but you could probably find something comparable maybe at a nearby store. But you guys, did I tell you that I'm making all four batches of these? So before we get uh, going on the rest of this, I need to hurry and make them all. So let's kick this into high gear. Here's batch number two. So I have a couple like right here and right here that could be filled a little bit more. And my batch three and four, I don't have 12. I think I have like 10. So I should be able to be nice and full on those ones. So let's keep going. Right, so I am near the end here. I have these last seven in which I'm going to use these gluten-free um, graham crackers. They're called honey grams. Uh, for my husband, for his, uh, these are going to be for him. These are pretty pricey. <laughs> That's the thing about gluten-free is that it's not cheap. Okay, they smell just like graham crackers, so that's good. So we're going to smash these up, and I'm going to start putting them in the into the bottom of the wells. And they're small enough that I could put them right on top. Perfect. I am just filling up the last of these cups and then I'm going to show you how how I finish it off so very easily all you have to do is just push the cookie in so so easy and they turn out so good so one batch if you follow the recipe it'll make about 12 um, individual containers and you probably will have leftover cookies so this is actually going to be the, my husband's cake. So the ones that have the gluten-free crumbles on them on, and the gluten-free uh, graham crackers on top will actually put candles in there and he can blow those. So all I will do now is just wrap these up with 
saran wrap, put them in the refrigerator, and they will be good. I've had some people ask if, if you can um, freeze these. Now I could see maybe individually freezing them because it, when you take it out, it'll be more like an ice cream cake-ish. Um, so I think that would be completely fine to do. Make, but if you're having it in the glass pan or that might be a little bit harder to do individual cuts, completely up to you though. So here are these little cookies for the graham crackers. Oh, these are great. What a great alternative. Do you have a family member that has um, a specialized diet that can't have everything? Maybe it's sugar-free, maybe it is gluten-free. I'd love to know. And then if you are able to have a compromise and have something that they would love as well. I know Paul is going to love these. Look at all of these behind me. So we're having about 20 or so people coming and I figure a couple of them may want to have more than one. So I have about, I have 37 regular ones and seven gluten-free ones. So now I get to try. So good, you guys. And then with bananas, that combination is divine. Mmm. So let me know in the comments if you've ever made Paula Deen's Nacho Mama's Banana Pudding. It is super easy, super delicious, family favorite, people favorite, and you will be the star of the party for sure. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel and watching me do this again, revisited this recipe. I will link below um, the original time that I've done it. And I hope that you are able to um, pick up some good inspiration and try it a little bit different this time. So thanks again for stopping by. Have a wonderful day and stick around rollers. You just never know what I'll be rolling out next. Bye everyone.